hello everyone welcome back again to my channel before watching this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe now let's start this video Indonesia has an area of marine waters that reaches 5.8 billion kilometers where the dominance of the sea consists of the territorial sea is 0.3 million kilometer the archipelagic sea is 2.95 million kilometers and the exclusive economic zone area is 2.55 km. From a geopolitical point of view, Indonesia also has a strategic role because it is directly flanked by two continents, namely the continents of Asia and Australia, and is located between the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Not surprisingly, Indonesia is able to become the world's maritime axis and become a bridge connecting global trade between the Pacific and Australia. Broadly speaking, the potential of Indonesia's marine fish research is estimated at 12.54 million tons per year spread over Indonesian territorial waters and exclusive economic zone waters. The area of coral reefs belonging to Indonesia that has been mapped reach 25,000 km, but coral reefs are in very good condition only 5.3%, good condition 27.18%, quiet good 37.25%, and not good 30.45%. The Indonesian seas has about 8,500 species of fish, 555 species of seaweed, and, 90, and 950 coral reef biota. Fish resources in Indonesia seas cover 37% of the fish species in the world. The authors will conduct two reviews, namely a review of the juridical aspect of Indonesia's maritime policy during the pandemic related to the supervision of illegal fishing activities and the strategy for implementing policies in the midst of the pandemic to maintain the stability of the security of Indonesian waters. Aspect of Indonesian sovereignty as an archipelagic country began with the Juanda Declaration of December 13, 1950. Aspect of Indonesia's sovereignty as an archipelagic country began with the Juanda Declaration of December 13, 1957, which was stipulated in Law Number no. 4, PRP 1960, concerning Indonesian waters. In 1982, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea was established by the United Nations, now, uh, known as UN Clause 1982. Indonesia was required to complete its rights and obligation in managing marine resources based on the provision of UN Clause 1982, ratified into Law No. 17, Year 1985 which function to complete the arrangement of maritime boundaries, including inland waters, territorial seas, additional zones, exclusive economic zones, and continental silvers. Indonesian laws and regulations have several binding legal bases that serve as the basis for preventing and eradicating illegal fishing in Indonesia in protecting Indonesian waters, including a the Territorial Sea and Maritime Environment Act of 1939, Territorial ZEE and Maritime Crane and Ordonanti STBL 1939, number 442, B, Law of the Republic of Indonesia, number 17 of 1985, concerning ratification of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or UN Clause. C, Law of the Republic of Indonesia No. 5 of 1983 concerning the Indonesian Exclusive Economic Zone D. Law of the Republic of Indonesia No. 17 of 2008 concerning shipping Law of the Republic of Indonesia No. 32 of 2014 concerning marine affairs So far, the implementation of maritime law enforcement in Indonesia for cracking down on illegal water activities is running quite effectively where throughout 2020 there were several illegal ships that were successfully secured and legally processed. 
For example, the Sheng Tang Hun 66 was successfully captured by the Marine and Fisheries Resources Monitoring Agency on April 21, 2020. The ship was found in the Sulawesi Sea with a long line fishing gear commonly used to catch tuna. The ship entered the Celebes Sea on its way back to its home country from a fishing area in the Pacific Ocean. After being arrested, the ship was successfully secured and sentenced according to the regulation in force in Indonesia through an authorized court mechanism. Seeing the crash of action, appreciation to the government, in this case Bakamla, TNI or Polri, Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries, Regional Government, to local communities who are able to maintain the stability and security of Indonesian waters from illegal hands and law enforcement who are able to bring this case to court in order to have a deeper to bring this case to court in order to have a deterrent effect on foreign criminals. However, to continue to maintain the implementation of maritime law policies in Indonesia, a synergy and supervision from related parties is needed to be able to cooperate in handling, in handling illegal cases and promote a culture of integrity, transparency, and objectivity in law enforcement in Indonesia. Indeed, the current illegal fishing has changed the way it operates compared to the way it operated in 1990s. The crimes of illegal fishing has now become a highly sophisticated form of transitional organization. Indeed, the current illegal fishing has changed the way it operates compared to Indeed, the current illegal fishing has changed the way it operates compared to the way it operated in the 1990s. The crime of illegal fishing has now become a highly sophisticated form of transactional organized crime, one of which is characterized one of which is characterized by modern ship movement control and modern equipment. Fernandez, Fernandez 2017. Several modes of illegal fishing carried out, among others, by transferring catches from one ship to another in the middle of the sea, using a different flag and other devious methods that are other detrimental to the state. In this case, the government can encourage relevant international cooperation to maintain maritime sovereignty in Indonesia. International cooperation in eradicating illegal, unreported, and unregulated or IUU fishing will facilitate the investigation process. The information referred to can be in the form of information about the ship owner. This is done so that ship owners, both, in, both individuals and legal entities, can be held legally responsible for the crime of IUU fishing considering that the legal process for the crime of IUU. Fishing in Indonesia doesn't reach the ship owner. Other information needed is about the history of ship traffic. This is to find out the ship has space and catch fish in any waters. Furthermore, the condition of Indonesian water which is quite from fishing activities by Indonesian fishermen has triggered foreign fishing vessels to carry out illegal fishing. The ship are mostly from fight the ship are mostly from Vietnam, the Philippines and Malaysia. Some of the ship from the beginning have made Indonesia a destination for illegal fishing. To deal with this, the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries has actually made various alternative efforts such as Revised the capture fishery production target. Revised the capture fishery production target in 2020. The Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries has actually set a fishery production target in 2020 of 26.46 million tons, with details of 8.02 million tons con coming from capture fisheries. 7.45 million tons from aquaculture and 10.99 million tons of seaweed. A 
Okay everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Until the next one, bye bye.